I don't know how good it's going to look, but uh, where are you going? Oh, she can't go in the backyard. That makes sense. Welcome back to Dawn's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. Thank you for all your support up until now and any future support that you give me. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Lots of how-to stuff. The channel is growing. You might find it interesting. Anyway, today's video, we are going to install the 622 Nextbase dash cam into my GMC AT4. We're going to wire it using this hard wire kit so everything looks nice and professional. So we'll go through that quite quickly in this video, but we'll show you how. We're also going to look at these auxiliary cameras. You can only use one auxiliary camera at a time. There's actually three available. I've picked up two. We're gonna choose one for this installation, but we're gonna try both and compare them to see which one makes the most sense on a truck configuration. So this one here is wired, but attaches to the rear window. So we'll hide the wire up in the headliner. So we'll see what that looks like. And then we have this guy here, which actually clips to the side of the camera and has a, a long telephoto lens, if you will, to zoom past the cabin area and focus on what elements might be able to be seen from the rear view window. I have a feeling this one's gonna look best, but I wanted to do the comparison and then you guys get to see what's out there before you make a decision. Now I'm not going to do a full camera review in this video. I have two videos already dedicated to this, so link up above for the main review one. And then there's a second one where I show you footage comparisons because this is a 4K camera one of the few on the market, so it records at 4K, 30 frames per second, 2K at 60 frames per second, uh, 1080p at 120 frames per second. That means you can slow down that footage for any slow motion that you want. Um, this has the three inch screen, has built in Amazon Alexa. Uh, it's been a solid camera for me. It has a built in battery. It has a, a parking surveillance mode. It has uh, motion detection, shock detection. So you can see there's a lot there. I rattled off quickly. That's why I don't want to do a full uh, review in this video. Uh, but this is the camera we're going to use in here. We're going to mount it to the windshield. So let's get started on the install and then we can start doing some comparisons. Let's go. Okay, we have our hardware kit here. So we have our ground and we have a positive terminal to connect to a power source, 12 volt or 24 volts. So that might be interesting for you truck drivers out there. Um, but they also give you these fuse taps, but there's a problem that GM threw our way. In the fuse panel here, all the fuses in the cabin, there are these special tri-prong fuses and the wire taps that they give you only work with two prong slots. So we can't use these in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop out the 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter in the dashboard and we're going to tap into that wire source with this and then run the wires through behind the dashboard up to the headliner over to where the dash cam is going to go and then we'll get our power there. I was thinking about tapping into the circuitry that's up in the mirror up there, but with the camera mirror and all the electronics that are up there, I didn't want to tap into that at all. I thought it'd be safer to go somewhere that's fused like the cigarette lighter in case we have a problem. This is only going to draw two amps for the camera, which is very low. And I don't know if I'll ever use that cigarette light adapter. Um, so this should be just fine. Look. Okay, here we are in the cab. If you look down at the cigarette lighter adapter, here it is here. You have this silver piece that you need to dislodge first. So I got a little pick tool here. There is a little spot here where a black plastic tab comes through. And there's another one right across from it up on the top there. So if you push down on that and keep some pressure on this ring, push down on the other one, you should be able to slide this nice and out like that, this collar. And what that'll do is it'll release tension on the clips that are holding in this bezel. So now that that's out, and you can see there's little notches here to make it slide back in a certain way, this just pops out. You could even reverse it if you wanted the door to close the other way. But uh, now we have access to our wires. So one thing we wanna do is we're gonna test the voltage. I know it's 12 volt already, but what I wanna know is if this is constantly on, or if it shuts off when the vehicle is off. 
I'm okay either way. Um, the dash cam goes to sleep on its own and wakes up on its own through battery power or if it has fixed power. So either way, I'm not too concerned, but on my BMW, this is the reason why I bring it up. It shuts off the accessory plug, such as this kind, after about eight minutes. Um, so it's just interesting to know. So let's see if that happens. Okay, we have our voltage tester here. We've got 12.42 volts. That's just fluctuating a little bit. I'm gonna leave this uh, on and close the doors and lock the truck and come back in about 10 minutes and see if it's still on. Peeked through the window when the doors were locked after 10 minutes and it was still showing voltage. It's just lowered a little bit. So we know it's gonna be on all the time. Maybe it does shut off after 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but at 10 minutes, it hadn't shut off yet. So this is what we're gonna tap into. Now we have a couple of options. I can strip these wires down and uh, solder to them. That might be what I do. Okay, I'm just gonna fish some of the wire through so it's easier to work with all of this. I wanna keep this clean, so I've decided I'm going to use some wire taps. So what we need to do is cut the ends off these wires. Just like that. And then we take our existing wire, loop that in there, and then we take our ground to match. We pop it in there. These ones are uh, moisture resistant, so there's some silicone in there. And then we press them down. And I'm just gonna bring the pliers in here. And then just give them a little bit extra just to close them up. So there, that one's tapped. Now we'll do the positive side. There we go, that should be tapped. There's this little handy box here that shows you if you have a blue LED indicator and it's solid, your input and output are okay. So now we just have to fish this back through this receptacle here. And I already checked it should fit. And just a little bit of work there. Tuck these wires away, just like so. And this goes this way. And then we can plug this guy back into here. There, everything in there is concealed. Now we can work on running these wires along behind the dash here. We'll pop out the weather stripping in the door and we will run it all up through the headliner over here and we'll decide on where we want to put the camera. So we do have another fuse panel here, but there's still those uh, three prong fuses. So not like I could tap into this side either, but sometimes you learn as you go, right? So now that I've taken this cover off, I should be able to fish the wiring through here a little better and then follow this weather stripping all the way up. So this little box, I'm actually going to leave in here. I'll tidy up those wires and zip tie them together, but I'll leave that box in there so I can look at the LED anytime I need to if I'm troubleshooting or have a wiring issue. And that should still leave more than enough cable to go up through the headliner. So let me lock that in there and then we'll continue feeding the wire.
Okay, so we have a couple ways that we can mount this. Before I tighten this wire up, I wanna make sure I know exactly where I'm gonna mount the camera. Then I can pull in some of the slack and clip this back in and it'll all look nice and clean. Now we have a suction cup mount or we have an adhesive mount. The mount that actually goes to the camera will either clip onto this and then you'll have the sticky mount, but I'm gonna use the suction cup mount this time. So this actually just clips in here like so. And then this plug goes in there like that. So then the camera, you can see we got power there. The camera just uses this really strong magnet. And there you go. So I got to format the card on this one still, but that's how easy it is. So what we want to do is try to figure out where the placement would be good. And remember, we're going to hook on that other camera. So we probably got to put it over here somewhere. And that's why I'm using the suction cup mount because I might need to move it around. But there's our camera installed. We'll play with the memory card and stuff later. And then we can tighten that up later. But this is the part you wanted to see. You wanted to see what it's like with the modules. So let's get started with that. All right, let's start with the rear view camera that's gonna plug in on the side. One thing to note is with these cameras, any of these modules, if you will, when you plug them in, depending on the next base camera that you have, remember we have a 622, it may affect the resolution of the forward facing camera. The only one that's not affected when you plug in a module is the 622. It'll still record at 4K or 2K or 1080p, whatever you have it set at, regardless of if you plug this in or not. With the lesser models like the 522, 422, 322 and so on, when you plug in one of these modules, it actually decreases the resolution on the main camera. So just make note of that. So in this case, because I have the 622, I'm not going to lose any of my forward facing resolution or settings and it's automatically gonna be 1080p for any of the rear facing stuff. So let's uh, plug this in, align it, and see what it looks like. Okay, we should be able to just plug this in on the side. How about we open this little protective door, and this just plugs in like that. Okay, we have it plugged in. If you have a close look here, you can see the camera is pointed out the back window, so you can see the uh, recycling hands back there and I can play with the lens here just to fine tune it a bit. So if I click on that, it actually brings it up into a full screen mode. And then if I click it again, it goes back to just the uh, camera. Okay, the camera's recording. I'm gonna get out of the truck and go stand behind and see what the footage looks like. So I'll be right back. Okay, we got a little bit of test footage with this rear facing camera. I have a feeling the other one is gonna do much better, obviously, because it's gonna be on the back window. But because I have the sliding glass uh, back window, I have to put it off to the side, otherwise the sliding glass would hit it. So let's pull back in the garage and let's uh, run that other camera, hook it up and do a little comparison. All right, we have our rear camera here, but this one's the wired one that's gonna stick to the back window. Open this one up, there's the camera. It's actually a magnet, so that's pretty cool. Now I should be able to stick it to the rear glass like that and then move the camera into place. So being that it's a truck and it's a flat back window, that's really good, but if you had an angled window, you could go like that. So I have a feeling this is gonna be the best solution, but uh, let's hook it up and have a look. Okay, we'll just open the sliding glass here and have a look, see which way it goes. So it goes to the passenger side. So we have a little space over behind the passenger side headrest, or we could mount it up in the top left corner, or we can mount it anywhere on this side. I think I'll mount it on the driver's side. All right, here is our camera extension cable. This is gonna go through the headliner, which I'll do off camera, because that's not that interesting. On the ends though, you have a mini HDMI that plugs into the side of the camera where the current camera module is. And then the other end gives the camera power and that video feed, you plug it in like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mount it temporarily 
I'm going to run this wire just through the middle of the truck, plug it in so you can see what it looks like. We'll pull the truck outside, we'll look at some footage, and we'll do that comparison. Okay, we've relocated the camera. It was up here in the corner, but it looked kind of goofy on the footage. So I've actually moved it more centralized here. I'll go out behind the truck. We'll uh, have a look what that looks like compared to this module here. I already know this one looks better, but I want you to see and make your own judgment. Okay, now we know that we like this camera better. So we're gonna leave that wire connected there. That allows me to move this mount much closer over to the side, keep the dash cam up out of the way. That way it's not gonna interfere with my rear view um, camera mirror either. And we'll just stick that up like this. And then we will tuck in all our wires and snap it back together. But anyway, I'll do that off camera. If you like today's video, hit that like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm, gets this video out there for more people to see, which helps the channel grow. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Love the support. Anyway, we'll catch you next time. See ya.